people talked about portraits, uh, but um, yeah, I really did not want to do that. Um, so I thought, well, pretty soon here, pretty soon we're going to have some spring flowers and uh, the first flowers are pretty much, you know, daffodils and tulips, although you're not supposed to put them in the same vase, just so you know. Um, this was, Why? They're beautiful. There's something in the daffodils that kills the tulips. Oh my God. I know, you're not really supposed to, but anyway, and this isn't a real bouquet, this is photoshopped. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, just going to kind of figure out where things go. I kind of, I don't know if people really have time for this, but I kind of have liked this thing where I work on it like tonight, um, work on it sometime in between, and then work on it a third time in class. But, um, oh gosh, um, let's see what is uh, Fantan Latour is one of the uh, really great flower painters. And he often did things like this where you just saw a little bit of the base. So one problem I always have with flowers is that you've got the flowers, but then, oops, geez, the vase is so far away. Um, the bottom, you know, the vase, if you're doing the whole vase, it's so far away. Okay, so, um, so now- What's that artist's name? Fantan Latour, I think, L-A-T-O-U-R. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I should have looked up flower painters for tonight, but then, Right when I was actually, I did think that, and then I couldn't think of anybody. Um, okay, so you kind of got some choices here. You can draw things in very, um, draw it in really well, and then the good thing about that is when you start painting, you don't you'll you don't have to worry because you have a nice accurate drawing. Or you can draw it sloppy like this. This is probably too sloppy even for me. And, um, and then you have to be more careful while you're painting. So I guess what I prefer is somewhere in between. Um, if, if you're gonna paint gardens or outdoor gardens and stuff, it's really great to spend some time painting flowers um, indoors too. Um, maybe I've got them all a little big, but um, I don't know. I'm just gonna kind of go with this. Okay, so I just, was gonna start with this one that I felt like I could actually do. Uh, tulips, I know some people said they were never never doing tulips again, but of all the flowers, tulips is, are about the easiest because they have the fewest petals and they have the most structure. Um, I did take this photograph by the way, so. And it's um, in natural light, not electric light, so. And I thought about darkening everything to the color along in here, but then I just couldn't make it look good um, in Photoshop, so I left that out. Okay, so I, I actually did, I feel like I did a little bit better job than usual um, getting this just sort of placed, just the first rough end. Maybe, maybe now I've gone too far over here. <laughs> um, so the other thing I do with flowers is it's really complicated to try to draw in all the shadows, like to shade in all the shadows and stuff. So I don't, I don't usually do that. I, um, oh my gosh, okay, so this is here. Sorry, I might not actually be able to talk into this. Um, I, I start with the shot, the, the dark colors when I start my, um, when I start my color, I actually start with the dark colors, not the lights. Because that way, if I put the darks in the wrong place, that's okay, I can cover them up easy. Uh, whereas if I put the lights in the right, wrong place, it's harder to fix that. Okay, and so what I'm trying to do is like, I've got a lot of little negative spaces. And so when I got right to this point, I realized that this, I didn't have this space right here between the flower and the stem. So that the stem and the flowers make that little space. 
So drawing with negative shapes is, uh, for me, is a really important part of the way I draw. Um, because, you know, you can say to yourself, well, I can't actually draw a flower, or I can't draw a hand, or I can't draw this or that. But if you're trying to draw the spaces in between, those, since those don't have a name, you can't really say, I can't draw that. You can't draw that funny little space. And it, it just takes off some of the pressure. And it also means that if you get this space in here correct, then this, this, and that will all be in the right place. So it's a um, very useful thing to do. Oh, I got I got a great chair from Blick. I think it was from Blick. It was only about eighty dollars, and it's just really easy to put it up higher or lower. So instead of always having to move my easel, I just kind of like I like better moving my chair. I think it was about eighty bucks. So that's nothing when you consider my favorite brushes cost twenty seven dollars a piece. Okay, so then I can see like when I look at this, I see, oh, got that way up too high. So that needs to come down a little bit. Um, and, and then when I look here again, I can say, oh yeah, <laughs> yes, so right, Janine, that was too tall. And I probably came over too far too. And then some here and then trying to sort of draw this shape here. And also another thing I kind of like right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking quite a bit at what I'm drawing, at the photograph of what I'm drawing, not at my uh, painting. And that I'm do, kind of doing a contour drawing um, right this minute. So there's some things that, um, like if you ever took drawing, or even if you just read that book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, um, there's some things in there that are super helpful. Uh, which and those two of those things are contour drawing. It teaches you how to do contour drawing and also how to uh, draw with negative space. I'd say negative space drawing is one of the biggest tools I use, which is pretty funny because I'm pretty sure I haven't mentioned it in a really long time. Um, another thing that's not great planning, which I kind of did here, I'm sort of coming all together to the middle. Um, that can be kind of a disaster and you get to the middle and you're way off. So you want to be kind of careful about doing what I'm doing like this. And I'm just going to try to put in those black parts of those tulips. Oh, how I wish I'd cut that tool out. Okay, so I think this is hard to mount. Also, I've seen a uh, Fantan Latour do them where there's uh, no base, just in case I don't get the base in my picture. I've occasionally had enough daffodils that I could actually paint them out in the garden, you know, like there's been enough of them in a clump, but it just seems like for me anyway, usually I can't get a decent composition. So I usually prefer just to paint them indoors. I can't because moles eat the bulbs. They eat daffodil bulbs? No, the tulip bulb. Oh yeah, well see, nothing will eat a daffodil bulb. That's why you can't put them in a bouquet with other stuff. Because the other stuff is jealous that they can't be eaten? <laughs> no, because they're poisonous. Okay, so I'm sorry that I got this so off the page, but you know, things happen. And maybe if I was just here by myself, I would do something about it, but um, I'm not.
All right, I'm kind of getting tired of drawing at this moment. But I should draw a little more. Okay, so I don't know where this goes. I don't know where that goes. Oh God, then there's this thing, which I, <laughs> I sort of went away and forgot about here in the middle. Grace, I have an important question for you in a little while. You might just have to help me remember that I have an important question for you. All righty. So, yeah, so it just looks like I know massive confusion here. Um, okay, so this is here. There's some things here. There's this yellow here, which leaves that little space there. There's this. So for me, um, you know, normally I would have done my drawing and then I could just switch over and start thinking about painting. But in this case, um, I've got my drawing started, but some of my first step here with my color is also going to be drawing. Okay. And a lot of times I would start with the background first, you know, that's my usual, but, um, and actually now I'm going to do something even weirder than that. But anytime you have something really bright that you might not be able to achieve if you got the background wrong, don't start with the background, start with like the yellow. Because if I just looked here, what if I made this too yellow and then I couldn't achieve my yellow? So um, yeah. So when I'm doing flowers, I don't do the background first. And I try to set up my background so that, oh, good night. I had big plans here. Of course, I forgot. I had a big plan to have a place I could put my pastels that wasn't in my box. But okay, but never mind. Okay, so I'm going to start with the shadows on the white flowers. And um, I kind of am drawing. That's one thing about portraits too. You never have a time where you just get to paint a portrait. Like there's a time in landscape and a time in um, still life usually where you just get to focus on the color and the painting of it. But that is just not true in portraits. And um, it is not true right at this moment. And maybe it would have been if I'd done it even better, if I'd done a better drawing. Janine, did you see the movie Portrait of a Woman on Fire? No. Or was it a lady on fire? Anyway, um, it's a French movie. And I think you'd enjoy it. OK. Maybe you can just send me that name. OK. Because uh, I, I don't want to write it down right now. And I, I know I won't remember. Um, OK, and I think maybe inside this weirdo pink one. I could make it start with the blue also. Okay, and so then um, you remember that when you're doing red, you just, you have to start with red because the red color is physically so hard that nothing else will go down on it, especially the Rembrandt <clears throat> ones. So this is Janine, a Rembrandt red. Janine, before you keep on with the red, can I ask you why you see blue in the white flowers? Well, what do you think they are? White with a little gray. Um, so what I would say is in flowers, especially, I would try not to use gray. Okay. Um, I would try to, I mean, although I one time, I just saw the most incredible paintings of peonies that were almost all grays. It was incredible. But, but I trust you, I believe that, that blue is good and that's why I do what you do when I'm doing assignments but I would never see that on my own well um so what I do is I can't I say okay it's gray but what kind of gray is it is it a green gray well I got a lot of green stuff so maybe it's not greenish gray although I I'm not done you know blue is just mm -hmm. a start 
you know, it does have some warm colors in it, but I don't want to compete with the things that really are yellow. So um, you're using a colder color. Well, yeah, but what I'm, so what I'm doing, I'm trying to figure out what kind of gray is it. So I just said, okay, I think it's kind of a bluish gray. So I started with that and then I'll, you know, add other stuff into it too. But anytime I'm tempted or I think something looks gray or another neutral color, what I do is I just say what kind of gray or what kind of brown. And I tend to start with, I have what's called a prismatic palette. And I took a picture of my palette to show you another picture so you can see it. Um, see, I can put this purple over that because it's a soft color. I wonder if I'll be able to put the red over that. And I should have started it. No, it's fine. It does look a little different though when you put the red over the purple than when you put the purple over the red. So uh, prismatic color means, a uh, palette means I use mostly the primary colors and the secondary colors. And so I do use gray and I might use gray in the end, but um, for now, it's like my first best stab at it. And uh, if my teacher was here, what he'd probably tell you is, well, he was the guy that I learned this the most from. And that you you just you want to study with someone who has a better color sense than you do, and then which I appreciate. I feel like that's what you said. I appreciate that. But um, and that's how you learn. Like you, you sort of learn to take chances and stuff. It's harder to take chances with flowers, I've got to say, because um, you know I don't want to do something like start my background red because I think I see a little red in it. No, because that would really interfere with this. And the, and the whole reason I have a nice neutral paper, the paper is more like the background in the photograph than anything else in the photograph. So, um, oh, here's something. I know this isn't drawn right, you guys, I'm sorry. Um, but I left out the shadow and it's really important to know where the shadow is on something like this, or I might just forget about it when I start. But um, yeah, okay, so that was a long time talking about why I use blue. Um, but you know, I might, like right here, I'm gonna, inside this one, I'm gonna use a sort of a orangish brown, like a burnt sienna kind of color. Um, I, I think that, you know, uh, yellow, yellow I think is one of the hardest colors. And then uh, white is a really hard color too, because like you, if something's blue, then you can say, okay, it's light blue and dark blue. But if something's white, it's not really light white and dark white. And um, I think you might be surprised how many times I've seen. This one seems pinker to me, so I want to get some pink into the orange before I start. Oh, yeah, so hopefully when I was rattling on about that, one thing you might have noticed is that it's all varies and it all depends on what's around it. So if there were other things around these white flowers, I might not have started them blue. It's a, a relationship thing uh, where I'm trying to see the relationships between the colors. And um, yeah, so, oop. Um, what color am I? Okay, I'll just, I'll just try that. Also part of me feels like, yeah, I mean, here it's a little different. I'm, I'm being a, a more careful in this instance, but whatever you start with, you just, you kind of go from there. You start with it and then you say, uh, oh, well, what do I have to do to make it better? And whatever you started with that, that depend that, I don't know how to say it exactly, but if I started with green here, well, then I'd probably have to say, oh my God, once I put these greens here, no, this can't be green. I've got to add something else to it. But since I started with blue, once I put my greens here, maybe I can say, oh yeah, I can have a little green because it's not the same as this green. So um, yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to stay away from yellow in the, uh, at least in, I think I'm gonna probably stay away from yellow and everything because yellow, um, yellow is one of those colors. I mean, to start with, I definitely have to make stuff yellow, but the yellows in um, the Rembrandt pastels are very cold. Um, and so a lot of times I find I have to start with some kind of, this is actually is the orange parts in here. I have to start with something besides yellow 
or my yellows look too uh, washed out and stuff. So, um, yeah, I said that I can't find anything I can stand to start with. I don't want to start them with greens, why? Well, you know, just take a chance, I guess. I'm going to start them with pink. So that what makes, yeah, so yellow, like yellow is so much associated with the color of light that if you, um, um, if you, if you um, make your flowers light yellow and dark yellow, um, th they just won't look like light and dark. So if you kind of squint at this flower in the photograph, you can see how dark that is, um, how dark these have to be. And I didn't do them because I couldn't figure out what I was going to do. No, that's too light. Um, so, you know, just I, sometimes you just have to use stuff because you can't, you can't figure out what to do to make something dark enough. So I'm just going to use this purple because I know it's dark enough. And then, um, um, I've got some quotes for you tonight about, um, yeah, I've got some quotes for you. I can't think of them right now, but they kind of talk about like this, like I'm being a little, being a little anxious or something right now. Okay, so this is going to be the white and white, and I'm, I'm definitely not using white yet because once I've used white, I've got nowhere to go. That's it. I've like gone to the top of the values and um, there's, there's nothing else I can do. So any colors I want, and probably any with the yellows too, I guess, any colors I want in my light whites, I have to put them in before I put the white in. And, you know, it is kind of a crapshoot then because I can't, I'm not exactly, I can't exactly relate colors to each other in a way when I'm doing this as I want to because I'm, I'm way off on the values, you know, they're not right at all because I'm pushing things down so that I can be sure I can, um, you know, not get too light, blow out the lights is the term they use. So I don't blow out the lights before, um, yeah, before I'm ready to go to the top, to the brightest whites. And I would say that, um, you know, flowers, I think, I lost my place. Flowers take some knowledge. It doesn't hurt to have some knowledge with flowers of what you're doing and um, that you just get that by practicing by painting flowers that's where you get that so and even if you're if you really your big plan is you want to paint gardens outdoors all the time which you know is a great and awesome thing to do um, then painting flowers and vases uh, really helps to be able to suggest the flowers in the garden Ah, okay, I'm exhausted. Holy cow. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm gonna try to get the whole thing covered, right? That's like, what was I thinking? Um, and then I just, for the dark greens, I'm just gonna to start with, I'm gonna use my darkest blue for these stems. Let's see if I can really actually get them. I have one leaf in here. Um, I think some people had a lot of trouble with all their leaves. Maybe I seem like I remember that, that they had a lot of trouble with all their leaves in there. Oh, look at that. Just... So anyway, these tulips used to have a lot more leaves before I whacked them all off. Janine, that looks blue. Is that a dark blue? Yeah, uh -huh, it is. I, I, it's my darkest color, so I'm just going to start with it to be sure I can really get um, my 
my greens dark enough. Okay, so now, um, and same thing, you know, I don't want to overdo it on the background. So I don't want to make it too light. So I'm just going to start with this um, purple. So if you think of it as, um, well, that it's not like oil painting where you you can mix you mix things together on your palette and then you paint them. This is um, different in that you're I'm mixing all my colors, mixing them right up here on the on the paper itself. And they're not gonna mess very well. I kind of forgot about that whole part actually. All right, now I have this poorly drawn face. Like the one thing, that's the thing too, is if you're trying to make stuff look real, um, things that are natural like flowers or um, stuff, it's, it's a little easier to make them look believable, but um, yeah, look at that, oh well. Um, but when it's a base or something that's manufactured, then you have to worry about things like symmetry in them. But also down here, I'm not gonna, I mean, it's barely in my painting. Whoops, that is an expensive pastel right there. Um, all right, so. Okay, so you guys, I'm, I'm just thinking I would just go a little bit longer um, than 30 minutes, like maybe, 10 more minutes. And then if we don't have time for all the other stuff I kind of put together, we can always do that some other time. Okay, so now if I stare at my red flower while I look at the background, I can see the red flower up here doesn't look dark enough against the background I have, which is too dark. So I'm just gonna lighten it some and I'm, I'm gonna leave out. I definitely always have the feeling that I cannot see what I'm doing um, in a painting until I have it all covered. It's just, I'm just trying to get the thing covered. And then after that, I can, um, I can see and I can start comparing things to each other. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to lighten these up and see, whoa, Oh, that didn't mess things up. No, okay. I need to lighten up the white ones and just see. Then I don't know what happens next. So I'm still not going to go clear to white. Um, this is kind of a pink. But I want to start making sure that these are going to look bright against the background. And I will definitely redraw this before I paint on it more. After I spray it, I should be able to, you know, take care of any business after I spray it. Again. When, I won't say if, I'm gonna say when I need to correct mistakes. <clears throat> I think um, I can't remember exactly what this was in reference to, but I I feel like somebody at this week. Oh, I think it was those those um, that onion painting. They asked me which way the light was coming from. Now that that is a really important question. 
And it, it's something you want to figure out before you start painting because everything depends on that. So the light is coming from here. It's a window and the light is coming across. So um, yeah, and one time I was at one of um, Frank Mason's demonstrations and it was a landscape and he asked the student where the light was coming from and the person did not know or they could have been just struck down by the awe of Frank Mason, but I was like, I don't even know how you paint a landscape when you don't know which way the light's coming from. Okay. So it's important to pay attention to that. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, be calm, remain calm. All right, so I said, just trying to get it all covered again. So I started this one a little more fuchsia. I'm gonna put the red on it now. In some ways, the things about flowers, one thing that's slightly less fun to do is that, okay, you're good. It's just that, okay, well, they're red. And that's like almost all you have to say about that is they're really red. And, um, you know, so grungy old things that are gray or um, more neutral colors are more fun because you can't exactly name a color that they are. I'm doing pretty good putting my pastels over on the side. I just would like to say that. Um, okay, and you know, it really is hard when there's no real bright. I'm just gonna, like this one is really bright. And um, so is this one. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of it there just to give myself some ideas about it, about how that might go in the future here. And I, I'm so sad they don't make these yellows. They don't make um, Windsor Newton pastels anymore, but you might be able to find some like on eBay. The yellows are fabulous. So this is a Windsor Newton yellow. Um, sometime right before the pandemic started, one of my previous students gave me her whole box of like, um, I don't know, 280, 300 was so happy because I, well, I was so happy to be thought of in that way, but also I was so happy because I had just been trying to find them and find, found out that they didn't make them anymore. Okay. Janine, yeah. if, you did, if, if you didn't have that Windsor Newton yellow, you would not have made that um, daffodil more yellow? No, I couldn't have yet. I mean, you gotta have to have something. If you paint flowers, you're going to have to have some better pastels, probably. Um, okay, and I didn't ever really do this. Just don't want to really let get that. So this is that dark blue again. See, now back here, let's just see what happens if I use some gray. So there's some gray, but you know, it's always going to be more than gray because it's got blue and purple under it. So it's not like I never used neutral colors. I guess I used to pretty much never, but um, now I've kind of, I've found that there's a time and a place for gray, but I don't think it should be the first thing you do. And even then I'm not sure. What Okay, so I just want to at least get two colors everywhere. That was my big goal here. Um, That, that little thing just went way, I don't know, that that hand was not connected to the brain right at that moment somehow. So 
Um, this is a great American Artworks um, orange, and it's also, see, it's really good. Um, there's a really good Rembrandt one too, but every time you try to use it, it just breaks. It breaks and breaks and breaks until your, your, your whole stick is broken. So that's a bummer. What would happen if I got this white somewhere? You got to remember too that white is kind of a cool color. Yeah, so that's the white on top of that. That's not much more. So I might have to, you know, play with the background to make these things stand out. And I, I don't mind doing the white right this minute because I'm going to spray it anyway, and then all that's going to get darker. Okay, okay, I'm gonna say that's. So when you spray the white with the colors under it, will it then take on some of the color that's under it again? Yeah, I think so, right? And that, and that how it seems to you that. I, I haven't used white much, so I wasn't sure. Oh. Well, um, it's not like I'm anti using white. I wouldn't, don't think that. I just don't wanna use it too soon. And, um, I tell you, the person that helped me with that so much was um, Billy Brower. I like went to about three of his um, sketch classes. I couldn't keep going because um, the paint, the paint thinner made me, or the turpentine made me feel too sick. So um, I didn't keep going. But that was the thing I really learned from him was don't blow out your lights. I and mean, that's exactly how he phrased it. So don't let your stuff get too light too fast. Um, Reserve your, reserve it for later. Okay, I'm back. I have one other question. Um, I think you said in passing as you were doing that background, over on the right side, there was a bit of the window frame. And you did you just decide you're not gonna include that at all? It just complicates things? Yeah, and I tried to take it out in Photoshop and I couldn't make it look better taking it out. So I thought I'll just ignore it. But I might do a thing where, over there, I might do a thing where I kind of have the dark sort of shift into the, mm -hmm. like it'd be nice to have it darker behind those daffodils and then maybe lighter on the other side behind the red flowers. But I decided I could do that without manipulating it. Okay. All right, now on to your all's great work. <laughs> 